Yeah, for, for some reason, YouTube, if you are out of action for more than 60 seconds or something like that, it just automatically terminates the stream. It's very frustrating. I wish they could, like, extend that time out for, you know, intermittent breakages and things like that. Anyway, as I was trying to say before, I've restarted things, and look, the color is perfect, so it's very frustrating. You know, this is what I hate about these USB cams is that... Um, I have no way of controlling the behavior of the color and things like that, so who knows. Very frustrating, so yeah, welcome to what the color should be like. And, uh, great, we just wasted pretty much a whole stream for that. Anyway, let's go find something to cry over. Mm, yeah, well, there's no shortage of cry over machines. Crikey. What have I got here? That's that T2 from last night. That's just a downright freaking nightmare, that is. Uh, let's see. Okay, you've been sold, but you've got a dead screen, so I can't save you. Right, you've been fixed, but you need to actually. I need to actually back up the data on you, so that's something else. Yeah, let's reassemble that. Okay, until I can think of something. Let's reassemble that. Oh, great, autofocus, freak. Heck. It's now. You know what? I'm not going to mess with it. This is the 3437 that we did the other night. This is the one that had the depressed trackpad and that tiny bit of damage. So I'm just going to put it back together. At least with one more thing off the shelves. Oh, are you telling me that the above head one is also... What I don't like, and I'm not sure how to fix this in Open Broadcaster, maybe someone can tell me, but Open Broadcaster now queries the cam for the settings. So they're trying to be helpful. They're trying to give you, they're trying to give you stuff to make your life easier when you're in the stream, you know, and you want to adjust brightness and things like that of the camera. But the trouble is, it just seems to be more of a um, botch up than a success. So, okay, overhead, no focus auto, okay. Potatoes, thank you. Yeah, so I mean, I can understand what they're trying to do, and I think it actually could be a very good feature to have because it's nice. You know, you just previously I would have to launch a separate program to manage the control of the camera separately. Well, I said separately twice. Oh, well. But it just doesn't seem to work with all cameras properly. And so it just becomes more of a nuisance than anything else. And I think that's why I keep getting the lockups now, because when I try to change one parameter, it tries to access all the parameters. And with a lot of the cameras, they don't have all of those parameters available so it generates a good number of errors and the camera gets upset and the USB port gets upset and then all you all, you crash you just crash hey surging welcome back yeah we'll get this back together and I'll see if I can find something interesting to fix Unfortunately, it seems that the universe is hell-bent on not giving me viable jobs lately. And I'm still waiting for my freaking TV. I ordered that two weeks ago, and it's still not here. It's a, it's a serious joke. Arnold G, no, there's no thermal paste on that one because that actually doesn't even come into contact with the heatsink. 
if you were to try and heat sink that you would actually have to get one of those um, thicker pads and they just don't do that when you take these off it's only the CPU portion not the PCH portion that has the thermal transfer paste on it that's from factory This is going to be my customer wants a machine um, spare machine. One thing I've noticed with ultrasonicing, at least with the solution I'm using, and you can't really see it, unfortunately I can't zoom in, but the CPU inductors they go this very brown color and it's only the CPU ones these ones over here don't get affected by it and I just realized that the damn it I'm getting a lot of these now where the last segment of the heat sink assembly the fin assembly it just breaks off it's not super essential it's more frustrating than anything else I just realized I haven't But more and more, when I take them off, they're just breaking off. And it's not because I'm mistreating them or anything. It, they're just, yeah, they're just not t holding on anymore. You can put them back on with a bit of soldering. Uh, I don't really see a huge point in it at this point. Hey, Smeller. I would like it if I got MacBook Airs, at least two a day would be nice. That would be a nice level of you know, repair frequency to have of Airs. Sometimes I'll get three, sometimes I won't get any for a week. But if you average about two a day, that's a pretty good number to have. And then you've got time to do the other more annoying jobs. And be nice if they were just backlight faults or clock faults or <laughs> stuff that you can just walk in, fix up, walk out, cash in on the cash register. Have we got new flooring yet? Nope. That won't be. Well, if we're lucky, we might hear something about it at the end of this week, but I suspect it's going to be at least two weeks away. Because again, being in the rural area, what they'll be doing is they'll be waiting for a sufficient number of people to order a carpet installation and such, such that when they hire the person to come out to do the install, they're going to spend all day here you know, doing that work. And that is completely the wrong screw for that work. So yeah, just unfortunate in this particular case it seems like we were in the new block as it were and so we're just going to have to wait a little while until some more people order carpet to get installed I suspect if we ordered say three or four maybe five rooms then we probably could have had it in a day or two that's just not the way it works mm -hmm. Why would I want to check the T2 machine? Why? What possible reason would I have to submit, check myself to unpleasantries?
I actually don't know how to say your name, Mr. S. Say? I don't know. I do apologize. I don't know how to pronounce that. Admin Media, what did you do? Or what did I do? Maybe when I get the HDMI card with all four ports and stuff like that, Maybe I'll set up this camera and put it off to the side like we had just before. And it can be like an observation, overall observation type camera. Shaik, Shaik, okay. Well, I thought it might have been there, but I didn't want to be too presumptuous. Looks like I should have been presumptuous. Pay less in rural areas. Yeah, you pay less for some things, but you pay a pretty heavy price for everything else. I think the worst price that you pay is your um, health. And being in a rural zone is very bad for your health. You would think, how's that work out? You know, you've got clean air, and you know, which in itself isn't actually true. But unfortunately, the truth is that. Your health suffers out here because most of the time getting medical services is a bit of a schlep. Uh, just organizing them, scheduling them, yep. And then if you've got to, say, go get a CT scan or something like that, that means a trek into town, as in Townsville or worse, Brisbane. And so because you know you're going to be facing these frustrations you have a tendency to hold off and so you just keep holding off you keep holding off until it becomes a very serious situation and then typically it's too late and so overall rural life expectancies are lower Ah, uh, hate these. Hopefully I won't cut my finger off just doing this. I was actually pretty close to cutting my finger off. Uh, Tony, I guess it's all relative. It's a case of, you know, choose your bag of issues that you're going to carry with you in your life. That's fundamentally what it comes down to. We all have a bag of issues. And it may be different to other people's. But it's our bag of issues. And chances are, with many people, we'd probably find you'd rather not trade with someone else. Not always, you know, obviously there's some people with very serious issues that um, definitely they'd be happy to trade with someone else. I've just got to go get some feet for this board. Hmm. 
Oh, I just realized I do not have 1466 feet. I've got 1278, 1369, 1502s. I do not have 1466. Well, that's just fantastic. Just dandy fine. Another great day in my stockroom. Mo, what are you doing, buddy? You are out of control tonight. Don't put your foot in me. Yeah, exactly. That's why, because you get it crushed. No, huh? You don't want your foot crushed, do you? <laughs> yup, what, what? Where's your brother? Is, where? Where is he? Oh, okay. What? No, you can't play with me. Oh, I've got work to do. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> you stay there. Oh, come on. You're gaming me on that door, aren't you? Come on. Okay, see? Look around. Great. Yep. Okay, now out you go again. Good boy. Ugh. Crikey. All right, so I don't have any feet for the 1466. I'm a <laughs> Oops. Yeah, well. My bad. Was it do wood carp do wood carpet sucks? Um, let's see. For this particular room, well, I won't be doing carpet at all. The only room that we're doing carpet uh, is one office, just a admin office for or Elita's office, and the bedroom. Wood isn't really going to be a good viable match in this house. And I certainly don't have the money for truly good, proper wood floors. Camera went blank. What do you mean? Scope cam is dead. What was I even just looking at? I don't know. Hmm. Oh yeah. You're kidding me. Yeah. yeah maybe I'll be forced to <laughs> maybe I'll be forced to have to get the thousand dollar card a lot sooner than I want. The connection shouldn't be a problem. It has a very nice cable attached to it. What was that? I think I'm going to have to go out there and see what's going on. I think he's throwing a little bit of a tantrum out there because he does want to be in this room, but I just can't let him be in this room for obvious reasons. But yeah, I think he's going up to random stuff in the hallway and just knocking it, <laughs> knocking it over. A little brat. Are you knocking stuff over? Oh, you got your brother here. Oh, no wonder. Yeah. Loki, what are you doing? What are you doing? Come on, get you some biscuits.
Oh boy, that's always fun. <sighs> ah, yes. The very stylish colorizing of stickers on this laptop. At least I know it shouldn't be stolen in a hurry. Okay, so this is a 3437, so it's going to do the stop to start sort of business. Now, my chair is nothing specific, no. I can't, I'm not 100% happy with it, so I'm not really going to list it. Uh, what's going on here? Interesting. I bet you it's going to come up with something like a question mark. That'll be fun. That will be fun. It means I'll have to fix that and ultrasonic it again. Oh no, it's had big sir put on it. Why? Why, 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 why? Why put big sir on these things? Now, surprisingly, the red plastic razors do a very good job of getting these stickers off. Okay, looks like I need a little bit of alcohol on that one. Ooh, I don't have a keyboard. Alright. I wonder, did I get slightly gypped on this one? Even cat. Did I put the keyboard in? Just get these stickers sliced away. Leave the native animals. <laughs> They're kind of in the way, you know, Mara. As much as I do love the native animals. I certainly would have left the dingoes there. Oh, Bilby. Cockatoo. Kookaburra. Tasmanian Devil. I want to say emu, but that's, yeah, maybe they just coloured it up a bit different. A wombat. And these are gum nuts. They're not actually animals, they're gum nuts. And a shark. Alright, oh, that's a little peculiar. Why don't I have a battery works? Okay, it's a bit precarious trying to get stickers. Oh wow, I'm slicing away the the housing rubber. Whoops. The bilby. What? I thought I said Bilby. What did I say? Did I say Bunyip? <laughs> did I say Bunyip? I was meant to say Bilby, but it would be funny if I said Bunyip instead of Bilby.
Ah, oh, the magpie's flying around elsewhere, ready to peck your eyes out. Actually, I'll be honest, I've never had that trouble with magpies. I've always been perfectly fine with them. It probably helps too that, well, particularly now at least, because I live here, you know, the magpies know who I am, and we don't give them any grief, and they don't give us any grief. But even when you go down the street, past the park and all that, I see people getting attacked. It's pretty funny. It's, it's a bit scary for them, obviously, and it is dangerous. You can suffer eye damage and lose your eye. But I think some people are just predisposed to being attacked by magpies. Victor. Oh wait, no, you're saying hello. Yep, my Chinese is terrible lately. I don't even have I don't even have trackpad. Wow, something actually do really, really go bad on this one. It's funny because I was actually told that this one was the one that just works as being great. It simply had a depressed trackpad. And maybe it was just... Some, oh wow, look, we've got more on the back. Okay. There are obviously people who do respect nature. Because, you know, dogs on the leash, so that's good. I'm um, sorry. Sorry, kangaroo. Another kookaburra. Kind of a toucan. Ghoulian finch. Very colourful finches they are. Good old sulphur crested cockatoo. A non-Australian owl, by the looks of it. Echidna. Crocodile. Another non-Australian finch, by the looks of it. Platypus. Supposedly God's joke to the world. In this case, no, the stickers will not be going back on because this is my machine now. And that, of course, is a peacock, a male peacock in that particular instance. Yeah, the plastic razor does a very good job, whereas most other tools, when you try to get the stickers off, they just, yeah, you know, they just ruin it. Uh, 57 dent. No, the the other one works perfectly fine. It's behind me, just running nicely. Now that was the 2017 one. 27. This is the 2013. So it looks like we do have a problem to work on tonight. Thank goodness for that. Of course, it could end up just being something dreadfully simple. A summer because I purchased this one. This is a um, what do you call it? Facebook Marketplace purchase. Now I bought both the 2017 and the 2013. Now fortunately the 2017 is working, so that at least I can sell and recoup my investment. But I do kind of need this one to work. Uh, 
Helps if I take out the last screw. Alright, so they are plugged in. So we do have an issue here somewhere. Probably, hmm, let's see, a solder bridge around because it'll be an SMC in that case. Ah, I see the fault. The fault is that Mr. Dimwit Daniels forgot to put the flex that goes from the trackpad to the rest of the machine because obviously the keyboard goes on the trackpad, trackpad goes into the main board. Now I think it will actually work. Wouldn't that be something? This time we're just going to put one screw in, plug it back in. Oh, we still have the problem with the solid state drive there. So I'll disconnect this. I'll put in a different solid state drive. I can't imagine it would be due to APFS issues because if it's got Big Sur on it, then it's definitely going to have an APFS enabled EFI on there. I didn't actually repair this one on Monday. I just sort of looked at it, cleaned up that trackpad and then moved on to the 2017. took a while, a little longer than it should, even for a 3437. Yeah, the key's well worn there. Okay, so we are booting, so there's something wrong with this drive, or maybe it just simply didn't get formatted properly. Interesting, I still don't have keyboard. Alright. What is going on here? We do have trackpad at least but we definitely do not have keyboard and I've noticed that the on off button is depressed as well none of the keyboard works that's interesting even the on off doesn't work normally the on off should work even when the rest of the keyboard doesn't work, because it's a separate line. It makes me wonder if we're even getting any voltage to the keyboard. But it did at least boot. So we know that the SSD connection's okay. We've still just got issues with the keyboard. The trackpad's fine. So let me guess. Yep, there we go. Dimwit Daniels strikes again. Blimey heck. Good thing I'm working on my own devices, eh? 
Can you imagine if I was um, a professional or so posed a professional paying, getting paid for this stuff? Oh, what the? Come on, camera. Not today, buddy. Great. Great. Honestly, I think I... Yeah. Maybe I should just give up. You can't see it, but I can... S I'm just putting the... Keyboard flex... Back in. Keyboard flex is now back in. That's quite depressing that I'm having all these dramas with the system. Considering it was working nicely before. Yeah, we did have the occasional hiccup here and there. But overall, the setup was working pretty good with the dual HDMI. And now that is all but dead. And I don't know if it's the microscope camera at fault, or whether it's Linux at fault, or whether it's OBS at fault. Because what happens is I can see that the camera for the microscope comes up in the, um, the system messages. But then OBS keeps querying it for things that it just doesn't support. And so it gets upset and embarrassed about these queries about things that it doesn't know, and it runs away and shuts itself down. And that's why I'm sort of getting a little grisly with what OBS is trying to do here. And I've got to tell you, without a microscope camera, there's not much point having a channel. No, it's definitely not we're running off a USB cable now because the HDMI is gone the actual HDMI converters capture dongles are dead both of them now Yeah, Miles. Well, I mean, you know, they were within 12 hours of each other because I managed to get one stream done just using the one port. And then that was it. It uh, didn't work thereafter. Okay, it looks like I need to put a High Sierra install USB stick in here. Yeah, okay, let's get the High Sierra. Come on, High Sierra, I know you're in here somewhere. Jeez, how many of these? It's one of those sort of sticks. Come on, I just had it tonight. I even said to myself, oh look, I've got my High Sierra stick. I'll put it into the, into the pile of, oh. okay, you said no, High Sierra boot, but that's no good. No. Well, this is really turning into a genuine crap test night. Come on, 
surely one of these is it and I've just missed it. No, no, none of them. Well, that's a disappointing outcome. Hey, Rat Mole. Okay, let's see if option R works. <sighs> I don't think I leave it plugged in anywhere. Because I don't even recall using it. I haven't done a high Sierra install. The other one was a the 2017 that was a Catalina and I just let that one be oh. well at least the internet recovery is starting, if nothing else. Hmm, yeah, that's generally got me a little bit stumped. Not sure where I'll put that, high Sierra. I have a bad habit of losing it to the point where I've got a permanent clone on my file server. In the meantime, let's try and see what's going on with that uh, microscope. Nothing. Cancel. Okay, So this is where it's yeah, making a mess of things. So it finds the camera and it assigns it you know, a UVC code. But then what goes wrong here is it says, you know, failed to get info. So it's looking for a name for the camera. And for some reason, it then goes into this uh, not support. I don't know if it's related to the name, trying to get the name or not. But it does seem to actually create the device. And then it just does nothing. So I don't know what's going on there. Okay, Victor. Enjoy. Satyan. And pulled it out, and it's doing something really bizarre with the USB bus. I mean, honestly, Linux's support of USB is awful. It's just like this major cluster of hack job fixes sort of thing. It just uh, it just seems to not know how to do USB properly. See, new high-speed device using XHCI HCD. Yeah. Uh, the motherboard is a gigabyte, I think. Yeah. Let me have a look. Uh, yeah, gigabyte something. It's for a i5 8400 or 8500. So it's got DDR4. Yeah, it's it's not a super cheap mainboard. It's, it was a fairly decent one. 
So I don't know what's going on. What annoys me though is that it was working before. Now it's not. So that's it's like yay. And it will work one every fifty times. Yep, tried changing the order. I've put different uh, USB cards in. I've gone back to using standard. And the thing is, you can get it to work for a little bit. And then it will stop again. And that's the most frustrating bit. Okay, let's, what are we doing? Pseudo DMI decode. Minus T2. Yeah, Gigabyte tech. Yeah. By the way, the machine has booted into the internet recovery. Oh, it's going to do Mavericks. Cool. Okay, the downside is it can't see the disk. Alrighty. Quit install. Uh, Victor, are you talking to me or someone else? The cow, yes, the um, HDMI converter dongles got extremely hot, both of them, and it was the converter chip itself, the all-in-one type chip that just, uh, it was at the point where you'd burn your finger. Okay, so it does see the drive. I'll just erase it. Gavin, how about all of the above? Okay, well, that's all I had to do. I just had to erase the drive and now it's good to go. And it's in the process of installing Mavericks. Arnold G, so you need me to download that. Alright, doesn't it all sound like it'll be a scam? Just kidding, I know it's not a scam. <laughs> Reminds me of when we first tried to get Lewis to download something or to go to Banggood. To, see, uh, to check out a product <laughs> he would not go to that site and I can't blame him I mean with a name like Banggood that's pretty sus yeah BIOS version the yeah, question is how am I going to actually how am I going to actually load this BIOS in that's going to be the question Alright, so I've got F14D. So it's this USB and actually, oh, 
Okay, did not know that. What is that, a secret or something? Um, I'm actually using your bum too. Uh, what format does the USB stick have to be in? Just FAT16 or something? FAT32, alright, okay. I'm just going to plug this in, and then I can hope not destroy everything. Fat32. Alright. Fat32 and not VFAT. Okay. And don't be fat like me. Oh, did I run out of battery power? That would suck eggs. Alright, bear with me. Alright, so we've only already got FAT32 on that. And it's got nothing on it. Fantastic. Uh, looks like it's bootable anyway. Oh, so I can actually just copy it over. Anyway. And unfortunately, to obviously determine... Oh, it is still installing, by the way. Just... Never mind. Extract the zip, put in D file. Oh, right, okay, yep, it's fine. Uh, unfortunately, that's something I'm going to have to do after the stream because clearly you don't want me to do it now. Yeah, well, the H370 file is on there, so it'll be fine. All good. All done. I don't think I've got a yellow one, or do I? No, I don't think I do. I've only got a, a red one, which is the always-on port. See, 16 minutes. Alright, well, I, I can shut the stream down and 